Here's a hundred bucks a day. Here's 200 bucks a day. Oh, wow. I just did a $300 day, you know, and then it got overwhelming. Not apologetic. Nonsense. I've been eBaying on and off for the last decade, right? It wasn't until the PS5 drop that I kind of started making my way full time. You know, them PS5s at the time, if you had a dealer account like I could, you could buy them 550 landed and people were just lining up for some reason to pay 850 a pop. It was shenanigans. And that was the first like big initial boom where I'm like, hey, if I find the right product, this is actually doable. So in order to go full time, I started reading about things I'd need. I'd need to be tax exempt. I'd need to actually have a business license. I'd need to uh, have a resale certificate, at least here in Missouri. So I started going down that road. I got all the pre proper paperwork. I got all the businesses set up. Everything was good to go. But here I am sitting with an eBay account and nothing to sell, right? I did what kind of every seller does. These are like the most popular videos on YouTube. They call it retail arbitrage. Arbitrage? Arbitrage? Basically where you go into like Walmart, something's marked down to like 99 cents. You use your phone, you scan the barcode and you're like, oh, I can sell this for $34. I'm gonna buy every one they have. So I went down that road and one thing I learned about the retail arbitrage is it's so time consuming. You might spend an hour going down the aisle and find three items. You might make all of $30 for six hours of work. That's not enough for me. So I continued on down my path, uh, mainly focusing on sales. So like Best Buy has sales, right? Big daily sales. So every day I would see, okay, this monitor's marked down to 199, typically 250. Well, what's it sell for on eBay? And that's another big challenge because let's say the retail price is like 250. It might only sell on eBay brand new for 180. So when Best Buy has it marked down to like 150, that's not enough. Uh, that's not enough meat on the bone. Funny story was uh, when I first got into uh, the Playstations. Right, I did all the math. I'm like, okay, it's gonna cost me. I don't even remember what it was now. Let's say $28 to ship a PlayStation, and I'm going to have to buy boxes and some packing materials. After my cost of goods and my packing supplies, here's how much I'll make. I didn't put two and two together that, of course, eBay needs to be paid too, right? And this was back in the days where they used to bill you at the end of every month for all of your sales, what you owe them, that 12 to 15%. And in my case, for the PlayStation 5s, eBay was getting like 75 bucks a pop from me. So all of a sudden, I got a bill for hundreds of dollars that at this point, I had no money to cover. Now, they've redone that system now, so every time I make a sell on eBay, they automatically take their percentage out of that sell. Immediately, I never see the money, and that is such a better way to do it. But I do see a lot of people, they'll buy something, they'll say, hey, you can go sell this for $20 on eBay, I'll sell it to you for 5 bucks." Uh, I don't deal with cheap items like that, but even if I did, if I'm buying something for $5 and selling it for 20 on eBay, I'm not making any money. In fact, that's a scenario to lose money after shipping, packing materials, and eBay's cost. So, like I say, I did the best buy thing, and then I thought, I want to be a dealer. I want to go where Best Buy gets their stuff from. I want to go where Target gets their stuff from, where Walmart gets their stuff from. So in my process of looking to that, I started looking to these liquidation uh, outlets. Now, I didn't go to these little mom and pop shops who were like, come look at these pallets. You know those are a scam because when you walk in, they're selling individual items on the shelf, right? Separate from the pallets. Well, where'd they get them items? They got them from the pallets. You know what I mean? So I started thinking, well, where did they get them from? So I started looking and I came across, you know, the uh, top three liquidation retailers, let's call them. I got accounts with all them. I started buying um, the returns. And you'll see a lot of YouTube videos on this as well. That's a path. I'll still go down that path sometimes, but that's a path that you have to have a lot of time because it might be damaged. It might not even be in there. It might have to be repackaged. Best case scenario, you're selling each thing as an open box item about 10 to 15% less than anyone else is selling that on eBay. And bear in mind, what they're selling it for on eBay is nowhere near retail anyways if it was sealed. 
So that's sort of problematic. But I started getting uh, pallet orders. So I'd do a Sam's Club order or something, and I'd get like three pallets. So Semi comes pulling in. I get all these pallets. I started making a decent amount of money, and then I'd sit there and see it, and it's like, oh, here's 100 bucks a day. Here's 200 bucks a day. Oh, wow, I just did a $300 day, you know? And then it got overwhelming. So your phone will go off 24 hours a day, right? If you watch the show, you'll hear mine goes off constantly. Cha-ching, cha-ching. So you're constantly packing orders. You're constantly dealing with that while trying to sort and list your existing products. So I wind up, and this was just recently with my newest order, and I'll get into how crazy that was to get a actual semi, full semi load. I had to put something on my phone where eBay will not go off past 5 p.m. and before um, 8 p.m. And I kind of had to set like logistical boundaries where... Okay, I get up, I pack everything that's sold in the past 24 hours, make sure it goes out in the morning with the mail or at the post office, and uh, then I'll list throughout the day, right? 20 things can sell. I ain't fucking with them. I'm not touching it. I'm not dealing with it. And once I lay down in bed, you know, especially... I'm not answering. I don't care if it's a return. I don't care if you have questions about a $500 item. You're not getting my attention anymore outside of business hours. So once again, if you follow this show, you know I bought a 40-foot shipping container. One of them one-trip ones, like brand new. This thing is nice, and it's I, I have a big piece of property. It's on my land. So I got that, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to set up a little shipping center. Uh, I'm going to have uh, aisles of boxes all in different categories, and I'm going to also be sorting my pallets in there. Well, I overextended, and I bought a 10-pallet order, okay? Full semi, ba-boom. So my plan to sort items and pack items in the uh, shipping container went out the window, I had to take a room here here in the house, break it down, and now that is my shipping slash uh, sorting area. My uh, shipping container is now full. Not only is it full, I have pallets that I haven't even touched yet stored on the neighboring property in a shop because I just can't fit it. I, buy, I bit off more than I can chew. But I thought, man, if I'm going to take the leap, I'm going to take the leap. So I bought 10 pallets. I think it was Sam's Club, whatever it was. And right now it is going especially well. But for the past 60 days, I haven't received a paycheck from an actual job. Just eBay. And it is kind of a mind fuck the way it goes. Because see, I, I opted to get paid once a month. That way I can keep track of it. I can divide out if I have a bad week, whatever. I can divide out how much I made on a monthly basis. That's just a little bit better way uh, to do it for me. But the first month after you buy an order, like buying these 10 pallets is your best month. You know, you're going to be selling like crazy. So I'm waiting. I'm trying to figure out a formula where I buy so many pallets and you have that good month or good two months, and then you have just like trickle down months where you have stuff sells, but you're not getting them to $150, $300 uh, profit days. So I thought if I buy enough pallets once a month, enough orders once a month, then eventually I'll have trickle down sales from order one mixed with trickle down sales from order two, then into order three, and I'll be able to have them $300 days still without listing. That's where I'm trying to get to right now, but this 10 pallet order is absolutely kicking my dick in. You know, I'm listing about 100 items, 75 to 100 items a day, and I'm packing probably 15 to 25 items a day. And uh, yeah, uh, my plan is to, though, if I can kick ass with this, we're going to expand. We're going to do more shipping containers. Then I'm going to bring some of my buddies and family in. They're all going to benefit from this. And if I can figure all this out, a few avenues I haven't been able to figure out, I'll tell you what the final form is. That's me doing an eBay course. 
You know, you make that course, I make it once, and then I can sell that thing. Well, bear in mind, I have to market it. People actually have to want to buy it. It has to be good quality, but taking for granted that it would be, I can sell that thing 5,000 times, 10,000 times, and really sell it for years while going in and just uh, augmenting or changing certain chapters, adding more stuff in. I don't know. It's looking good, but uh, it's looked good before, right? Stuff happens. So we'll see what the future holds. Will I be able to make this sustainable, sustainable, or will I go crawling back to a nine to five? And if so, will that job even be there? Only time will tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Non-apologetic. Nonsense. 